Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be dealing with polynomials. We have x squared equals x minus 1, and we're supposed to evaluate x to the 11th plus x to the 10th plus 1. So based on the x values we find from the first equation, we're going to evaluate the second expression. Now, to be able to solve this problem, I'll be presenting, I think, two methods. And there's probably more than two ways to do it. But let's talk about some alternatives, and let's start with the first method. For my first method, I would like to solve the quadratic. Go ahead and put everything on the same side, and then you get x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. If you solve this either by completing the square or by using the quadratic formula, you're going to get x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, and that'll be root 3i. So you get the following values. Now here's the million dollar question. How do I raise this to the 11th power? Well, you could use the binomial theorem, right? So, and which x value are we going to use? The answer, it doesn't matter because the answer is going to be the same. As you can see, uh, you'll see in a little bit. Now suppose x equals this, 1 plus root 3i over 2. I want to raise it to the 11th power, so x to the 11th is just going to be this number raised to the 11th power. Now if you raise this to the 11th power, of course you're going to have to think about this number raised to the 11th power divided by 2 to the power 11, which I believe is 2048. There's, I believe, a game by that name too, right? Anyways, so what do you do with this? You can use the binomial theorem or use something else. A lot of times with polynomials, if you have to raise something radical to a high power, there's usually a shortcut, especially given that you have a time restraint, there's going to be a shortcut here. So some of the things that we can do is we can actually go ahead and try some smaller powers. What would happen if I square this expression, right? Well, if you square this, you're going to get a squared plus b squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1 plus 2 root 3i, and that's going to give us negative 2 plus 2 root 3i. Hmm, that is not very helpful. It kind of gives me negative 2 times the conjugate, and that might be a little helpful. So if you call this, because this is a complex number, and this is called this z, this is actually negative 2 z bar. Hmm, going into the a plus bi territory a little bit, uh, but that's what you get. z equals negative 2 z bar. Here's the nice part. If you multiply both sides by z, you're going to get z squared on the left. And on the right-hand side, you're actually going to get, actually, this wasn't. This is not right because it's already z squared. Never mind. Let's start over. OK, forgive me. I forgot uh, it was z squared. So z squared equals negative 2z bar is what we get. And now multiply both sides by z. And you're going to get z cubed equals well, now, what is that? Negative 2 times the absolute value of z squared. Uh-oh, what is that supposed to mean? It just means that z cubed is real, because absolute value of z is a real number, and how come z cubed is real when z is complex, right? Well, it just means that we're looking at the cube roots of a number. Anyways, let's just proceed with this and see what happens with the cube. At least, this demonstration hopefully shows you that something interesting is going to pop up with z cubed. Let's do it. Pretend you don't know what you're doing. z cubed is just going to be this times z, which is 1 plus root 3i. Let's simplify it. z cubed is going to be negative 2 minus 2 root 3i plus 2 root 3i. And then if you multiply 2 root 3i by root 3i, you're going to get 2 times 3 times i squared, which is negative 6, right? Okay, great. So from here, you're going to get z cubed equals negative 8. And of course, these two things are going to cancel out. Uh-oh, what's that supposed to mean? We're basically looking at cube roots of negative 8. So isn't that negative 2? Wait a minute. I did not start with negative 2. It was a complex number. So there, obviously, negative 8 has three complex roots. And we have to exclude the negative 2. So from here, you're going to get three z values. z equals negative 2. That's not what we want. That's, um, wait a minute, we don't need, we're not looking for z. 
we do need higher powers of z. So we do need z to the power of 11. Wait a minute, I got, I got lost. So z to the third, to the third is going to give me z to the ninth, multiply by z squared, and you'll get the answer. z to the third is negative 8, negative 8 to the third times z squared, and I think I know z squared is negative 2 plus 2 root 3i, so on and so forth, right? As you can see, this is going to take a while to complete. So it's not the best method. But one of the things that will be helpful is that from here, we did actually I forgot to do the bottom part. That's why we've been getting these numbers. So if you go ahead and let me rewrite that number, 1 plus root 3i over 2 to the 11th power, you're basically looking at this number. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to write it in polar form. All right. So to write it in polar form, I'm going to do the following. This is basically the cosine of 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, plus i times sine pi over 3. And when you raise it to the 11th power, you're going to get cosine 11 pi over 3. But what is 11 pi over 3, right? Let's go ahead and simplify this. I could probably take out a, I can't do a 12 pi, but I could do a 9, uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, maybe a 6 pi, right? Plus a 5 pi over 3. And 6 pi over 3 is going to be a 2 pi, so I can totally ignore it and write this as 5 pi over 3. So this is going to be the uh, cosine or e to the power uh, i 5 pi i over 3. Make sense? And what about the 10th power? The 10th power is going to be something similar, right? And that should be 10 pi over 3, but 10 pi over 3 can be written as 4 pi over 3. So it's going to be 4 pi i over 3. And then you can just go ahead and plug all of that in here. Okay? Now, here is another way to approach it. Now, we have x to the power, second power is equal to x minus 11. And we're supposed to do x to the 11th plus x to the 10th plus 1. Now, we said that x squared is x minus 1, right? So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x. And x cubed is going to be x squared minus x. And then x to the third uh, can be simplified by replacing x squared with x minus 1 minus x. And yes, this is what I was trying to get. x cubed is equal to negative 1. So in other words, x is the cube root of negative 1. And I believe that makes sense. When you look at the first method, we got cube roots of negative 8. But we did not divide by the uh, 2 cubed at the bottom, right? So when we include that, it, we would be getting the cube roots of negative 1. Anyways, we're not going to get into the complex numbers here. There's no need. We're just going to write x to the 11th as x to the 3rd to the 3rd times x squared. x to the 10 as x to the 3rd to the 3rd times x plus 1. Now, x to the 3rd is negative 1. So this is going to give me negative x squared. This is going to give me negative x plus 1. OK, what's that supposed to mean? Well, we do know that x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is the same as that, just the opposite, right? So this is going to be negative 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And since this is 0, the answer will be 0 again. All right, makes sense. So the whole thing is equal to zero, which means x to the eleventh plus uh oh, plus x to the tenth plus one is divisible by x squared minus x plus one. If you do long division, you're going to get the answer, and that's going to be a nonic polynomial. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye bye.